Hey everybody, it's Darcy. Hope you're doing well. So today I'm doing a fish head. Now, in case you're wondering why am I doing a fish head, I, I really have no idea. It's uh, something for practice for me and uh, I like doing wildlife and stuff like that. So we're going to get right to it. I believe this is a carp. Um, if you like videos like this, please like and subscribe. I appreciate all the uh, feedback I get and all the support. It's great and I hope you're having a great day. So let's get going. So the fish today, I think it's just a carp. But you know, it's funny, I'm not 100% sure. I was looking through reference photos and um, I just thought it was going to be a nice uh, picture to try and paint, but I never actually figured out the fish. There are some uh, large scales on its back, and that's why I'm leaning towards a carp. But I could be wrong if you know what kind of a fish this is from what very little you can see. Put it in the comment below and let me know. Um, does everybody remember the first fish they ever caught? Mine was in Lake Huron in Grand Bend, Ontario. I think I was about three, but I can specifically remember the incident. I was on the pier. And my grandfather was there at the time, God love him. And I caught a fish and I pulled it in. It was a perch. And when he, uh, when he tried to uh, get the hook out, he did get the hook out, but the fish flipped out of his hand and fell back in the water and swam away. So my ma, I was, I don't think I was terribly upset because I didn't think I was really knew what I was going to do with this thing anyway. I knew it wasn't something you could put in an aquarium or anything like that and uh, I didn't want to kill it or God forbid eat it at the time. So uh, I think in my mind I was more or less pretty happy. I didn't even have to deal with it anymore but that was my first fish. My biggest fish was in uh, Mitchell's Bay which is just off of um, kind of in between Lake Huron and Lake Erie. It's a smaller place, great for fishing. Um, and it's funny because it was a musky. And it took me an hour and a half to get this stinker in. It was absolutely huge. I don't have a weight, but um, I do remember it was um, it was 47 inches, I believe. So almost four feet. And you know, that sounds really big, but I was really disappointed because when I brought it in, the fishing guide said, and again, this was this huge fish, nearly killed myself getting it in, hour and a half, swear to God. And when I brought it in and he measured it, it was only one inch longer than the official uh, length that you can keep it. So the fish literally had to be 46 inches in order to keep it. And mine was 47. Uh, <laughs> so that was such a deflating experience, but... Uh, Anyway, um, used a couple main colors on this. As you can see, that quinacridon gold from Core Watercolors is um, my main one. And I had some fun with this. There's going to be a lot of speckling coming up and spattering, it's called. And I'm even going to jump in here in a second and explain to you uh, how, not so much how to do it because it's pretty easy to do, but you, you just don't want to splatter paint everywhere. Um, and you can see the gills there. This fish was basically white all along the bottom. So I added some pinks and violets just to give it some color. So here we go. I'm going to pop in here right now and talk to you for a minute. Hey, so I'm just interrupting the video. You're going to see now I'm going to do a lot of, uh, it's called spattering. And it's basically flicking paint off a brush to create little dots. Now, a lot of people do this. The one thing that might be a bit different about this one versus another video that you've seen is this fish actually from the reference photo, because I always try to use a reference photo, has a lot of little tiny, tiny dots on it. So rather than using the spattering technique just to create a texture, this is actually trying to keep the, uh, the painting true to form. Um, and then the other thing you'll notice too, there's certain areas that I cover up to make sure that I don't do the spattering technique on it. That's actually because on the fish, there aren't any dots. So again, this is trying to keep true to form and as realistic as I can possibly get 
because um, sometimes spattering is great to do it all over. It gives a lot of nice bit of a theme to it or a, or a flavor to it. But in this case, I'm trying to just follow the natural pattern of the fish and the dots it has on its skin. So let's get back to it. Thanks. Never realize how goofy I look in these videos. Anyway, that was me. Um, so what I did do was I laid over a template and the template is my original drawing and I just took it off there. So when I was spattering, it, it only went where I wanted it to. Um, and this helps because again, uh, there's just certain areas that should have the spattering and should have the dots. And you just, you to keep it as realistic as possible, like I just said there, you want to uh, keep it in just those certain areas. The, the spots, I think, throughout the fish, I used probably six or seven different colors of dots. Some of them were, it had to be a little bit more specific. I put them in by hand. It wasn't a big deal, didn't take too long. Um, and then others I just let loose. Um, there's the, one of the back fins I'm working on right there. That was sort of a brownie purple. So I just sort of left it in there and I'm gonna hit it with a couple streaks later. Now the back fins, they were just sort of a big mishmash of everything. Splats, splots, and the scales were separated and some you could tell and some not. Those little striations I'm putting in right now, I wanted them on the base and then you can see in a second, I'm just gonna spatter over top of them um, because those lines were definitely there in the uh, reference photo. So I wanted to make sure that they were there, but then there is a completely mixed up a uh, random pattern of spots over top of that. And um, so that's when I started doing stuff like that. And we're just getting towards the end of the video here. Uh, thanks for putting up with me and have lots of subscribers and nice comments and everything. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. If you're looking for something to me to try to paint, I can't guarantee you, but leave it a comment in the section below. And remember, I need to work on leaves and scales and fur and hair. So if that helps, yeah, that's what I need to work on a bit. But anyway, you have a great day and uh, that's about it. See ya.